Greetings, folks, and welcome to Play on Plug TV. This is your host, Enrico Nardini, here for www.playonplug.com. And today I'm here, it's Origins 2012, it's Sunday, June 3rd, and I'm here with Paul Miller, Commander-in-Chief. Very cool game. I was walking down the dealer's hall yesterday, and I had a chance to stop, and I met this gentleman, and he showed me this really neat kind of chess-like war game, and I'd like to share it with you folks. Paul, can you tell us a little bit about the game? Yeah, definitely. Hi, my name's Paul Miller. I created a game called Commander-in-Chief. What it is is simply, the best way to describe it is a combination of chess and checkers with an air, land, and sea military theme. So you take a traditional chessboard, eight squares by eight squares, turn it on a 45, add a terrain element, so you incorporate the land, sea element of a game where certain pieces go into the sea, like your submarines and your destroyers. Certain pieces that stay back on land, like your tanks, and then other pieces that provide aerial support, your bombers, your helicopters, and your fighters. The object of the game is to take out one piece called the commander, but again, he's heavily defended with this new orientation of the board by five rows of tanks and bombers, helicopters, fighters, submarines, destroyers. Mm -hmm. So basically, it lays out uh, with that theme, with the five rows, again, one object, take out the commander. But um, you have pieces such as an amphibian, acts like a pawn. It has to march forward as a pawn does, moving forward into water, but eventually its goal is to come up on land. If it does, it gets an element that incorporates a little bit of checkers. It comes up, if it makes it to land, gets a second base. I call this a platform base. A second platform base indicates that it's now a king amphibian, an element of checkers. So it promotes itself through making it across land. And when it promotes itself, it becomes a more effective attacker. Exactly. If it does that, it becomes a stronger piece. That might be part of your strategy. If you're down a piece, you can promote an amphibian to a king amphibian and gain an advantage if you're behind in the game. Other elements that incorporate it into the game that allow you to come from behind are if you want to enhance any of your pieces with a second base, that particular piece has to be hit twice to be removed from the game. Oh, that's a good way to make it a father-son type game where you don't have to actually um, give a, a child an opportunity to win by letting them uh, take your piece. Mm -hmm. You actually have to play extra hard because they have a piece advantage on you up to five, whereas there's 15 starting pieces. If you give five enhancements to your opponent, mm -hmm. like for my example, father-son, it's more like 20 on 15. That's a really cool way to scale it and it would make it really fun for families. Yeah, that's part of the process because I've been studying uh, the development of this game. Uh, it is a 3 and one 2 whereas you can play chess and checkers on the reverse side of the board. The board is reversible, so you flip it over, it's your standard chess board, mm -hmm. and my commander becomes the king, the bomber becomes the queen, fighter becomes the bishop, my helicopter becomes the knight, and my rook, my tank becomes the rook. Yeah, and one of the other things I think that was neat about it is like learning to play your game. When we, we sat down for like maybe two or three minutes, and I kind of already felt like I understood a lot of the game elements. It's got a lot of that, um, and we've been talking about it a lot lately over the con with a lot of the game designers I've been talking about, this kind of easy to play, easy to get in, um, shallow learning curve, and then deep, deep strategy once you get involved. Um, I feel like people who have played chess at all will be really familiar with a lot of the ways the pieces move. Exactly. Uh, the goal in the design of my game was to create uh, in its base form, its core form with basic strategy, a chess-like game. It comes with a one-page quick start guide, actually two of them, and an eight-page instruction booklet. That always happens, don't worry. Yeah, the, the point is, with a one-page quick start guide, I have eight unique pieces that you need to learn the movement of eight pieces. Once you learn the eight movements of the eight pieces, you can play this game. People sit down for the first time, they can play the light beer and pretzels version of this game. Mm -hmm. Then, if you want to take it to the next level, there's multiple advanced gameplay options to add deeper levels to the game, from radar to sonar to uh, reinforcements to the enhancements we talked about previously to uh, firing ability for some of the pieces to fire a shot forward. Yeah, and that's pretty awesome. And um, one other thing I just wanted to mention, we had talked just that uh, your, your game is actually being uh, featured in like museums and things like that, right? It's in like museum, museum gift shops, stuff like that. Yeah, I've had the game out for a year now. I launched it at American International Toy Fair in 2011. So after a year on the market, I know basically uh, where the game does well. It has a military theme. It's called Commander-in-Chief, so the military obviously likes the name. All the pieces are based off real military vehicles, and it does well definitely with the military crowd from the American History Museum of the Smithsonian to the World War II Museum to the National Museum of the Marine Corps and then of course as a chess variant uh, and being picked up by the United States Chess Federation it does well in chess circles for the kids that want to 
play their tournament chess games, and then when they want to take a break for that and have kind of a stylish military themed chess set or this chess variant, they can play for something a little bit different. I, I think as I, I think also yeah, anything like you know where us, I think for for uh, students too, like playing, you know, anyone who comes in playing chess, you pick this game up and it's going to be a really neat variant. Yeah, and, and at one point uh, it was originally designed as a chess variant. It has some different elements in it like blocking in addition to jumping. Mm -hmm. Certain pieces of my game block and prevent pieces from jumping, but at its core it's a chess variant. It's a trading piece by piece trading game like chess. And uh, again, that's part of the basis of the game was to design a game that's a three-in-one with chess and with checkers as almost a three-in-one chess checkers commander-in-chief set. Cool. Paul, thank you so much for sharing this game with us. And um, you know, do you have anything else you want to any 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 other things that are coming up the pipe for you that you want to um, you know share with Play Unplugged viewers? Or is there a website they should go to check out? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the website for Commander in Chief is quite simply CommanderInChief.com. Commander-in-Chief.com. The newest element to the game is I added um, territory tiles. So basically, the, the the basic structure of the surface is an eight square by eight square chessboard, just like in normal chess or checkers. But with the expansion set, I have these four square by four square territory tiles. On one side land, the other side water. So basically a set of 64 of these territory tiles allow you to create your own map, add as many expansion pieces as you can, and you can individualize the game however you want. So that's the newest thing coming out. That sounds great, Paul. Thank you so much for sharing your game with us. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, folks, I'm here with Henry Lopez, the creator of Arcanus. And Henry, you've won not uh, a Origins Award, you've kind of won the Origins Award. So tell me, how you feeling right now? It, it is a, uh, it's quite an honor. It's, it's an amazing honor. Uh, and it's a quite a humbling experience. Uh, it's an honor because of the, uh, the, the people that we were uh, in the category with. We had uh, the one ring uh, for Cubicle Games, uh, Air Pirates for Cubicle Games, um, Margaret Weiss's The Leverage, uh, Robin D. Law's Ashen Stars, and then us. And to, uh, first of all, to have just been nominated in that bracket is, the, is an honor. What makes it humbling is the fact that at, at the Origins Awards, when the, uh, the, the final selection is made, it's made by the, uh, the people, the consumers, the fans. And knowing that our fans took the time to walk all the way over to, uh, to the place, you know, uh, out of their, their, their vacation, basically, to vote for us is quite humbling. Uh, the, um, our fan base may not be the most, uh, the largest, the most extensive, but they are definitely the most dedicated. And uh, I, I can't, I can't say enough about them. That's awesome, Henry. You know, one of the things I've been asking game designers and writers this uh, this time at, or at Origins this year is like, what is it that when you roll out of bed and wake up and you go, man, I want to make more games. So for you, is winning this award. Is that part of it, or is it? Is, no. is there more to it? No, 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 no. The award, the award is. Uh, I, I can't, I can't lie. The award is very, very nice, and like I said, it's quite an honor. But I think what drives, what drives me personally, and there are days I'll be honest with you, when I have to sit down and go, oh my gosh, I got to write seven thousand words on this adventure, is remembering uh, like last night when we were holding our big event and having, uh, and seeing everybody playing what I wrote, and the smiles on their faces and their. And they're worried that they're gonna that they're they're not gonna make it, and they're cheers when they they defeat the, the big bad guy and, and whatnot. To me, that's that's what makes it all worthwhile. Once again, it's the it's the community. To me, they're not just clients; they're friends. And it's the community that we've been building over uh, now 12 years now, and uh, it's, that's what drives me at least. That's awesome, Henry. Thank you so much for giving us a few minutes of your time. No, no, thank you. Take it easy. Greetings folks, this is Enrico Nardini with Play Unplugged at www.playunplugged.com and we're here at Origins 2012, I'm in the Art Hall and uh, as this is Brant Lippincott, he's part of the Art College and also the founder of Toad Killer Miniatures. Brant, could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing at the con this year? Teaching beginner painting classes. I uh, found over the years that a lot of people that I teach locally in Michigan have a problem picking a miniature and then actually finishing it. Usually people get halfway done, they focus too much on one part. Keep going. <laughs> and they just need a little help to figure out what they need to do to get beyond finishing the miniature. So, let's see, I put it here simply. Get a new miniature and you're like, wow, this is an awesome miniature. And then you actually go to paint it and you never ever get it done. You're overwhelmed by all the little details. And what I've figured out is if you simplify the colors that you choose and you choose a simple miniature, not one that's crazy and awesome, but one that's realistic and within your abilities, 
you achieve a finished product. So I have taken a five step program and I've turned it into this right here. Let's see if I got them all right here. One, two, three, four, three. These are the steps. You would take the miniature, base coat it, and then you would paint all of your basic undercoat colors. Then you wash it and you end up with what looks like a messed up miniature usually. But then you reapply the paints that you've started with to those areas and it creates a simple shadow and highlighted effect without you really having to tr try to do any fancy techniques. And once you've Re reapply the colors, you can go back and you add just a few minor details and within just two, two and a half hours you can have a finished miniature by following these steps. Nice. And Brent, you're also the founder, like I said, of Toad Killer Miniatures. Tell us a little bit about that. I got into model railroading when I was about 11 and those skills over the years slowly became my miniature painting uh, techniques. About eight years ago, I put my first miniature on eBay, it sold, and pretty much it was all downhill from there. I have, in the last three years, three and a half years, become a full-time commission painter. I have a quick turnaround time, so it's allowed me to uh, stay, uh, stay in the business. Nice, that sounds fantastic. Um, if happens every interview. Um, <laughs> If, uh, if folks want to come check out your work or possibly hire you for a commission, where should they go? To toadkillerminiatures.com. That sounds awesome. Brand, thanks for talking with us.